Oh, wait, wait, it's a heat pump. It is the basics. This is our compressor, sucks low pressure vapor, pumps high pressure vapor, moves the refrigerant, goes into the, what line is this? Hot gas line, discharge line. From there it goes into the condenser, we first de-superheat, then we change it from a vapor to a liquid, then we sub-cool that liquid. All three of those are rejecting heat, giving up heat to the outside. We have our liquid line, so somewhere there we have to have our liquid line filter dryer. No, metering device is a different component. Then we get to our metering device, which restricts it from a high pressure liquid to a low pressure saturated mixture. Approximately 75% liquid, 25% vapor. That drops the saturation temperature below uh, the temperature of the air. So we absorb heat from the air into the lower temperature refrigerant. Refrigerant boils from a liquid to vapor. The heat is hidden, latent heat. Uh, and then after that, we superheat that vapor. We have a superheated vapor going all the way back to the compressor, right? Yeah. So essentially what we're doing is having the refrigerant a lower temperature than the air so we can absorb heat. And then having the refrigerant a higher temperature than the air so that we can reject heat. And I can change it to a lower pressure and a lower temperature by dropping the pressure with my meeting device and, comp and uh, compressor. And then I can raise the pressure and the temperature by raising that pressure because of the compressor and the meter device, right? Mm -hmm. So to get the heat to leave the refrigerant, my saturation temperature has to be warmer than the air temperature. Mm -hmm. To get heat to go into the refrigerant, my saturation temperature has to be lower than the air temperature. So the heat leaves the air, it goes to the cooler refrigerant, right? Mm -hmm. Then we raise the pressure, which raises the saturation temperature, and then I trick the heat by making the heat leave the refrigerant can go to the air because the refrigerant is warmer than the air, the air is cooler. Heat goes to the cooler location, right? Yes. So the heat's leaving the refrigerants. Then over here, I immediately have a pressure drop, which causes the temperature drop, saturation drop. My temperature here is below the temperature of the air. We absorb heat from inside. I reject heat outside. I absorb heat from inside. I reject heat from outside. Are we not moving heat? Yes. We are. Yes. We are moving heat. That's refrigeration. We absorb heat from a place that's unwanted and reject it to a place that makes a little difference, which is, in this case, outside, right? So far, so good? Now, if I took this very same compressor and all I did was swap the pipes. So the compressor still pumps only in one direction. But if I took those pipes and I switched them, so that discharge pipe, I took it over here and then connected it to that's what was the suction gas line, and started pumping my refrigerant this way. My refrigerant would then de-superheat, change from a vapor back to a liquid, and then subcool that liquid inside, right? And if I took this metering device and say it's there and I bypassed it, so my metering device there, but I bypassed it like it wasn't even there, just put a little bypass around it, this would be what line? This line here would be what line? Liquid, liquid line, right? but it's just going the opposite direction. Going through, I have to turn my filter dryer around so it has to face the other way. And then, out here on the outside units, what if I added a metering device here? Same coil, right? The coil is the coil is the coil. I put a metering device there. If I put a metering device there, what happened to my pressure? It would drop. Low temperature, low pressure. And then I had my coil, went through the coil. Refrigerant would be then lower than the temperature outside, boiling from a liquid to a vapor. And then I took that pipe and just connected it to the same incoming pipe side of the compressor. What would be happening here? Instead of getting air conditioning, you'd be getting air conditioning heat. Absolutely correct. That's exactly correct. I would be rejecting heat inside the house. The temperature of this coil would be warmer than the air temperature. As I move air across this warmer cooler, co uh, coil, the heat would be leaving the refrigerant and going to the air. The air would be heating up, right? And then, after I de-superheat it, change it from a vapor to a liquid, and then subcool it, even the subcooled temperature is higher than the air temperature, the subcooled liquid goes through the liquid line, goes to a metering device outside, and by going to the metering device outside, I drop the temperature, I drop the pressure, which drops the temperature, drops saturation, 
As long as that temperature is lower than the air temperature, will I absorb heat? Yes. 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 So as long as the temperature of this coil is lower than the outdoor temperature, I can absorb heat into the refrigerant. And then over here, I reject heat into the air inside. I'm absorbing heat from the air outside and rejecting heat into the air inside. That is a heat pump. I absorb heat from outside and reject heat to the air inside. Um, and a heat pump, as long as my saturation temperature is below the air temperature, I can absorb heat. At what point, um, one thing people always say is, well, isn't it, uh, isn't it cold outside? You can't absorb heat because it's cold outside, right? So you, you were going to say that? Yes, you can because there is heat all the way to 400 and minus 400. Yes! There is always heat down to minus 460 degrees Fahrenheit. So there is no cold. Remember, I broke you of the cold thing just for this moment right here. Even though the temperature outside drops, it can be below zero. There's still heat outside. At zero degrees Fahrenheit, how much heat is there outside? 460 degrees of Fahrenheit of heat. There's still heat there. Now, it gets more difficult to absorb it. It's more work to get it to pick it up, but there is still heat outside. So the heat pump absorbs the heat from outside and rejects the heat to the air inside. All I have to do for a heat pump is in the fall, I have to go outside or go to the inside unit and put a bypass around that meter device. And then I have to take, cut my filter dryer out, turn it around, and I have to add a new filter dryer to the unit outside, and then I have to cut the pipes from the compressor and then swap them because the compressor only pumps one way. Right? And then in the summertime, we go and we cut those pipes, we put them back the other way, I take my filter dryer and I turn it around the other way. I go ahead and cut this meter device out or I can just bypass it. So it's like it's not even there because I don't want it there. And then I reinstall my meter device inside. Sounds so simple. Yeah. Yeah. Right? You have to drain all that refrigerant. Not drain it, recover. Recover it. Yep. And yeah, it's so simple. Oh well, you know, yeah, there there can be an easier way if you want that. Oh, like, surely you don't have to do it. But do you understand the concept? If I did that, would would that work? Yeah, it would. Yeah. Work. Yeah. It would. Now this little line here is what line? Yes. It is the liquid line. What line is it here? Still the liquid line, right? Is the, did the refrigerant change directions? Yes. yes. It was flowing that way. Now it's flowing this way. But it's still the liquid, liquid line. It's still going to be a warm, liquid. high pressure, subcooled liquid. What's different is this. What's, what's this line here going this way? Suction, Suction, gas. Gas. Suction gas line. Low. Right? Low temperature, low pressure. But really and truly, it's a what? Super vapor. heated vapor. It's a superheated vapor. And it's the gas line, right? In the refrigerant in a gas state? So now that it's going the opposite way, what state is it? It's the discharge line or the hot gas line, right? And is it a superheated vapor? Yes. It's just now a high temperature, high pressure superheated vapor, but it's still a vapor. So here with suction gas going in, now it's hot gas going out. Either way, it's gas and it's gas, right? So in a heat pump, we don't call it the suction line anymore. We call this the gas line because no matter what mode it's in, it's the gas line. Remember when we first learned it, we said we call it a suction and it made you say gas line. I said, no, if you don't put gas line, it's wrong. But I put suction, I put everything. I just didn't put the word gas. No, you have to put the word gas in there. It's all about getting you guys prepared for today. This line is a low temperature, low pressure suction gas coming this way. Now when I change those pipes going the other way, it is a high temperature, high pressure, but it's still a gas. It's a hot gas line now. And this mode is a suction gas line. In this mode, it's a hot gas mode. The change, the refrigerant flow in a different direction. Does that make sense? Yeah. Isn't it cool? Mm. So this line is still the liquid line. The refrigerant is flowing the opposite direction, but it's still liquid. That 3 8 line is still liquid. This bigger fat line, it's still gas here, and it's still gas here, no matter what. All those two names make so much sense now. Ah, there's a reason I drove it into your mind earlier. 
And this is why. All right, so let's add some components so that we don't have to go and recover all that refrigerant and change all these components all the time, right? Yeah. Would that be simpler? Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to add a component. It's called, it's a valve. We're going to add a valve that makes this stuff happen. And it is a reversing valve because guess what it's going to do? It's going to reverse the flow of refrigerante. It's really a four-way reversing valve. There's four pipes on it. Notice we have pipe one, pipe two, pipe three, and pipe four. Pipe one, pipe two, pipe three, pipe four. So I'm just going to cut, uh, make some space here. I'm going to move these kind of out of the way. Leave my compressor. My compressor can't change directions. The discharge line of the compressor is always, always, always going to go to this one side by itself. Always. The discharge line here is going to go to the one pipe by itself. Always, 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 always. I have one I'll show you here in just a short moment. I don't know what I did with it. The one in the very middle is always, 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 always suctioned back to the compressor. Notice how it's kind of a little circle right here? Now, the refrigerant doesn't flow in a complete circle, but it always goes out of the compressor to the one in the very bottom, and the one in the middle is always suctioned back to the compressor. No matter what mode it's in, that always happens. Always, always, always that's the same. So if you have three pipes and there's one by itself, what line is that going to be for sure and always? Discharge. discharge. That is a discharge line. Hot gas line. No matter what, that's what it is. No matter what mode it is, that's what it is. Now what about the other line coming out of the top? That's the suction line. It's actually going to be what we call the true suction line because it's always going to be suction. I don't know where Tim's at. There's that. Okay. We'll get it in a minute. All right, so that's always, always, always going to be the same. Now we have two pipes left, right? Mm -hmm. And here we have two pipes left. Guess what we're going to do? Maybe. We're going to connect the pipes. All right, so, so this pipe here, in the summertime, now i got my hot gas here. I can either send my hot gas this way inside, or I can send my hot gas this way and send it outside. Now it's summertime. Where do you want to send the hot gas? you want to send the hot gas inside the house in the summer? Or in the summer, do you want to send the hot gas outside the house? Oh, Boom. So what we're going to do is connect these. The pipe connects in here, drops down, de-superheat, change from a vapor to a liquid, subcools that liquid, 30 meter device, drop the temperature, drop the pressure, boil it from a liquid to a vapor, superheat the vapor, suction line coming back. But as this suction line comes back, it needs to eventually get to the compressor. So what we're going to do is just hop over this line and connect it in here. Do we have a complete cycle? Anybody that has trouble with this, it's always because they don't do this first. If you do this first, you're set. If you try to do this later, it becomes difficult. Okay? So here, now it's winter time. In the winter time, do you want to send our hot gas outside the house? Or do you want to send the hot gas inside the house? So what we're going to do is connect these two pipes here. Sends the hot gas this way. We're going to hop over the line. It's still the gas line. We de-superheat. We change from a vapor to a liquid. We subcool the liquid. We have our meter device. We go this direction. We are go through this meter device, boil it from a liquid to a vapor, absorb heat, superheat that vapor. Now we go where? Back to the reversing valve. We have a complete cycle. So what happens is this valve has a little switch inside and it just moves over and sends the hot gas outside or it sends the hot gas inside. So it's energized 
de-energize or cool and de-energize or... Well, it depends on, on which one. We'll get there shortly. But by making this valve move, I change the flow of refrigerant. That's all it does is changing the flow of refrigerant. This valve, is liquid touching this valve? Liquid refrigerant? No. It's either high pressure vapor or low pressure vapor. Either way, it's vapor and vapor. What about here? Vapor, 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 vapor. All vapor. Some of it's high pressure vapor, some of it's low pressure vapor, but it's all superheated vapor. Low temperature, low pressure superheated vapor, or high temperature, high pressure superheated vapor. Either way, it's all vapor because it's all connected to our vapor pump, which can only have vapor in it, right? Sound good? So far, so good? Isn't that neat? All right, so now we've got to handle a couple other issues. One is this metering device. So what we're going to do with this metering device is we need a way of making it where to work in one direction but not work in the other. Hey, Tim. Timothy. Lineman. It's multi. Okay, never mind. I know we heard me. <laughs> Guess not. Okay. Anyways, we want to make it to where it works in one direction and one direction only. So what we're going to do is put a little check valve in here. What this check valve is going to do is make it to where when refrigerant is flowing this way, the check valve closes and refrigerant has to go through that metering device. Flowing in the opposite direction, the check valve opens and allows the refrigerant to bypass the metering device like it's not even there. Check valve it means it only flows one way. You ask me how to spell something? <laughs> check, like it, it keeps it in check. It only lets you flow in one direction. Like if you try to flow backwards, it busts the tires. Like you have those little gates you walk through and you're leaving the theme park and you can only you can go out, but you can't get back in. Check, check valve. It's a, it's a check. It lets it flow. It lets the refrigerant flow this way. And if refrigerant does flow the other way, it goes around that metering device. So if the refrigerant's going this way, it has to go through the metering device. If it goes the other way, the check valve opens and allows it to bypass. Is there electronic components on all these that when you flip your unit to heat, it switches everything on? Or no? Not no. these. These are just simply, it's like, a, have you guys ever seen a check valve for water? Mm -hmm. It allows water to flow this way, but it can't go back. A lot of the city stuff requires that on some, uh, on some components so that if they drain the, have to do work in a water main, it doesn't pull water from your house back in. It allows water to go this way, but it doesn't go back the other direction. Yes, like a beach ball. You have to like squeeze it so you open that little, just pretty much a flapper. A what? A flapper. <laughs> it's, a, it's a legitimate component. Oh, I've never had anybody uh, not understand what a check valve was before. You millennials, man. Well, maybe check, but I'm not. People started posting more things. You're a show. Since you always want to be based here, I want all your fun stuff. Check, but I'm just kidding.